our message for today is be, I titled it as be transformed by the renewing of your minds. It's in Romans 12, the text is Romans 12, verse 1 to 2. Uh, Andreas, could you put in? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> actually, while I was preparing this message, um, the word actually, g g the first thing that comes to my mind was Daniel and his friends, because we have been, I've been teaching about Daniel in our study group, and the Bible said that Daniel and his friends, they were too young, around 15 years old, when they were taken to Babylon. And the Bible said that um, they suffered severely, they were thrown into the furnace, and Daniel was thrown into the lion's den at the very age of 15 years old, and when the time comes that uh, Daniel was thrown to the, in that lion's den, it was, he was about eight years old. And the Bible says that in more than 50 years of service of Daniel, nothing was found, that the enemy doesn't, hasn't found any fault in him. And I was reminded of this verse, and I said to myself, maybe Daniel has the renewed mind. So I titled this as um, renewing, transformed by the renewing of our minds. Okay, so uh, the Bible said that, therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, the good and pleasing, perfect will. Okay, so this is the NIV uh, version, but I liked also the J.B. Phillips. The J.B. Phillips is with eyes wide open to the mercies of God. I beg you, my brothers, as an act of intelligent worship to give him your bodies as a living sacrifice, consecrated to him and acceptable by him. Don't let the world around you squish you into its own mold, but let God remold your minds from within so that you may prove and practice that the plan of God for you is good, meet all his demands, and move towards the goal of true maturity. Okay, uh, so th there it is. So I like this translation. Do not, uh, don't let the world around you squish you into its own mold, but go let God remold your mind from within. Uh, Pastor Jennifer was preaching about uh, last week about the Holy Spirit working in us and he's, she said that God is still uh, saving us. God and I believe it includes our mind as well. So the, to, to fully understand the, to fully understand the, um, the verse, let me say, um, It's God, the, let God transform you into a new person. So when we uh, say the word transformed, it is the same word in the second Corinthians 3, 18, when we who with unveiled face all reflect the, glory, the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. So. Uh, we can say that uh, Romans actually is saying that when we are transformed, um, our, our way of thinking is uh, changed as well, completely and rearranged. And that is by we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. So this, this um, preaching is about our minds how it is being renewed by, by God. The word here is, do not, uh, okay. do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. 
uh, the world here is the world meaning the world system we are in the generation we are in the popular culture and the manner of thinking that is rebellious rebellious against god so the world is not about geography it's about the culture of this generation which is ungodly and god doesn't want us to God wants us to, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We should not be uh, trying to conform to the pattern of, of this world. Uh, this generation actually is, is really, what can I say, um, as, as, as the time comes, as the coming of Jesus Christ is, is nearing, um, the, the value system is the, of this world is, is really very, try getting, getting really bad. If you just go out, you can see, I, I don't know, but in the Philippines, you just go on the on the streets. You can see the billboard with you know, with advertisement, which I think you can see that it's not really godly. It's almost nothing, almost naked, and everything is in just in the billboards. And it's, it's really, and even on the on the on the society, the in the society we live in. Homosexuality is actually being accepted, but the word of God does. The word of God, it's ungodly. But our world system seems to agree with this with this idea. So God is trying to renew renew our minds. Okay, so the primary exhortation of um, to renew our mind is found in Romans 12 verse uh, two. But the apostle. Paul plea for mind renewal actually begin in verse 1 when he said that to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. So it starts with verse 1. And I, I think this is about surrendering our will to God day on, the, on the daily basis. Okay, so we need to offer ourselves to God. Do not, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. So as I said, this is the popular culture and the manner of thinking which is rebel rebellious against God. But be transformed by the renewing of the mind is the opposite of being conformed to the pattern of this word. Okay, so let's look at the key, wor key verses on the subject of the mind. Okay, so let's go to Romans 8 verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And in Proverbs 23, verse 7, uh, it says that, For as he think within himself, so he is. So, how vital is the renewed mind? As you think, the, the Proverbs 23, uh, 7 said that, As you think, so you are. Okay, so that is why it is vital for your mind to be renewed, and our thoughts determine actually the great extent of our, um, the kind of man and woman we will be. It is our thought that governs our action, it is the thought that molds our character. So that's why it's very important that it should be renewed, okay, because the way you think actually affects your attitudes, it affects our uh, hopes, our fears, the way we think also affect the way how we're, we react to people. The way we think also affect how we speak and we handle our situation on, on the pressures we are going through every day. So that's why our, our mind needs to be uh, renewed. The, the Bible says that we should have the mind of Christ. So if, as Christians, we should take control of our actions. We need to control our minds. Our minds is to know how to deal with the, the temptations, the daily temptations, the daily barrage of our thoughts, that, so that we can overcome sin. Okay. Okay. So that means that daily we really have to surrender our, our attitude to God. If we really want to be renewed, our mind is certainly alive. It processes so many thoughts every day. So uh, as a Christian, we need 
to have the mind of Christ. Okay, the Bible is very clear on this. Uh, every day we have we uh, we have pressures. Okay, every day the world we live in is constantly trying to to mold us into the way of the thinking of, of, of this generation. Okay, there's a daily pressure to conform to the attitude and its value. So we need to renew this unhealthy habits, unhealthy values which we have observed, and. So many Christians are actually dominated by, by sin problems. Um, their habits, their behaviors, their appearance, the way they dress. They have a, a lot of problem within themselves. And I think uh, the, the reason for this is the uh, solution for these problems actually is dealing with the root problem. And that root problem is how the way we think. God's ultimate purpose for us is to be to come like Christ. The Bible is very clear that when Adam sinned, the image of God in us was lost. And God's ultimate purpose for us is to restore that image that was lost. And that can only be restored by renewing our mind. If we could start, if we got start thinking like the way Jesus think. When we begin to think about the issues the way Jesus does, we know we are becoming like, like him. So if you are to be changed like Jesus, you must first begin to think like him in order that as a result, your character and action might be reflected on, on, on him. For the, so for this to happen, actually, uh, we need to control our minds. Uh, there's a lot of we can see our minds, some of us are have really uncontrolled mind actually working in us. Example of this uncontrolled mind are, let me see, a stress and anxiety actually is, is one of the uncontrolled mind. A stress, stress though can be, it can be a repercussion to our health physically. The doctor said some of our illness is due to our anxious, anxious thoughts. This can lead to illness, actually, and medical study says that 70% of the patients have physical problem, and that is because, actually, the product of their minds and, and thoughts. So people suffer like that, even Christians does. So when we have, the Bible said very clearly, Jesus said very clearly that do not worry, but still we worry, <laughs> right? Uh, Jesus said, do not worry. And it was very clear in Philippians 4, verse 6. He said, do not be anxious about anything, but any breathing by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And he also said in Matthew 6, 34, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Its day has enough trouble of its own. But still we worry. Even though as Christian we start worrying about anything actually, it has it hasn't happened yet, and still we worry. But God's word is very clear on this. So I, this has something to do. We have to deal with this to control. This is uh, one of the character or uncontrolled mind I can say. So another one is um, self is self pity. Some of us actually had um, low self image of ourselves. Sometimes we think, oh, oh uh, I'm just like this, like a small potato. Uh, this behavior actually doesn't come from God because remember we are God's children. We are ears of God. We should not look at ourselves as just the Bible said that we are special <laughs> actually. Okay, we are joint ears of Christ. So it's, it's, it's if you have this um, Self, low, low self-image of yourself, you have a frequent pity partying, and this starts, you are trying to compare yourselves with others. This is actually uh, one of the uncontrolled mind which we need to deal with, okay? Another one is, uh, example is anger. Some of us have this uh, enormous problem. Some of us can control it, but some of us cannot. Uh, I think there's nothing wrong with anger. Even Jesus got angry, right? 
But the Bible said that, <laughs> that Jesus said that, let not your anger, uh, let, don't let the sun go down with your anger. Okay, so we need to, to deal with this. There is a type of godly anger as well. Jesus became angry, but it was in a, a godly way. But if you are angry just to, you know, we tend to have a physical, you tend to, if you cannot control yourself, you, sometimes it's by verbal abuse, it just come out, or, or physical abuse. And another, another example I'm trying to say is about fear as well. Uh, people have this fear that, uh, as I said, that my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite verses is Second Timothy 1.7, uh, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Um, fear actually is very destructive as well, because it can dominate our, our mind, right? Um, so we have to deal with fear. People fear for, for tomorrow. What will happen tomorrow? And if you can only change that mindset of yours not to fear because Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He holds the future, right? But sometimes we just fear what will be our future, okay? So this is one type of, of, of unhealthy, what I, I could say, behavior. So renewing the mind is absolutely, absolutely vital for every Christian. So as I have identified some of the examples of those uh, behavior, it is essential that we change the way we think. Okay, uh, first, to understand the state of our mind, um, in, we'll be looking at the state of our mind in before we were in Christ. Romans 1.28 said that uh, we, our minds were depraved. Our minds uh, think improper, unclean, and self-destroying thought. Okay? And our mind was full of sin. That was before uh, you were not in Christ. That is the, um, the state of our mind. And also, in, it also says that all of us who live among them at one time, in Ephesians 2 verse 3, it says that, uh, we were gratifying the craving of our sinful nature. Okay, the desires and thoughts. Okay, see how important is this uh, verse, uh, Ephesians 2. It is understood that it doesn't matter actually what kind of home you were raised. Even if you are raised in a Christian home or a dysfunctional uh, home, it doesn't matter because actually we were by nature gr is gratifying our the craving of our sinful nature. So it just come to us very natural while we were not before we were in Christ. Okay, in Ephesians four eighteen it also says that they are darkened by their un understanding and separated from the life of God. So the Bible is very clear that before we were in Christ, our minds were darkened. Uh, and even in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, it says that, uh, in whom the God of this world has blinded the mind of them who doesn't believe. And who is that who blinds us is Satan, actually. The Bible said that Satan is the prince of this world, actually. So. Uh, we often wonder why people go to church, but they are incapable of understanding the gospel. It's because their minds are blinded, actually. So now I would like to talk about now that you are in Christ, okay? What is the state of our mind when we are in Christ? So when we become born again, something happens when you are born again. God removed the veil. Suddenly, we understand what the Bible says. Okay? Uh, we understand the verse. It just penetrates to our minds. Before, it was so dark and we cannot understand. But it's God who give us. He, the Bible says that God uh, bring us to the light. We were before in darkness, but God uh, bring us to the light. Okay? 
and in Hebrews 10:16, the Bible said that. Um, okay. Um, I will make my people on the days of the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts so that they will understand, and I will write them on their minds so will they obey Him. So God promises us that once we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, He put words into our hearts and uh, and write them in our minds. Okay. So uh, so the, now that we are in Christ, it's now different. We had the spiritual identity, actually. Now, the Bible said in four, John 1, 12, we become the children of God. We become the children of God. So, and in Romans eight thirty seven, it says, in these things, we are more than conquerors. So I'm, I am telling this that now is that because when we go through uh, temptations, we forgot who we are. That's why it's very important that uh, you know your place. You, you are now a child of God. You are joint heir of God. And in Colossians, he said that he had rescued us from the dominion of darkness. So God has redeemed us. God had forgiven us. God loves us so much. The Romans 8.39 said that nothing can separate us from the love of God. So... That's why I'm, I'm, I'm uh, putting in those um, verses to remind us of who we are in Christ. This will help us um, in, in, in renewing our mind, okay? So, um, when you become born again, it's not that Satan is so happy. He, he doesn't give up easily. Uh, it's true that the devil will not yield his control over a person's thought without a fight. So we should be prepared for spiritual warfare when we declare war with our old way of thinking. But the battle has already been won. It's very clear in 2 Timothy 1, 7, God give us a sound mind. God give us a sound mind. So we don't need to, to have this um, negative thought and healthy thoughts because God actually can, can renew our minds, can renew the way we think. Because in, in Hebrews, it says that, in, I think it's in Hebrews 9.27, it's very clear that the Bible says, Hebrews 9, the Bible says that the blood of the goats and bulls cannot really erase our sin, but the blood of Jesus Christ clear our conscience. That means that God has taken already, taken care of our sins, all this my, uh, all thoughts we have, can be renewed. God can renew how the way we think. Okay. So, um, how does the devil, um, as a Christian, as I said earlier, he doesn't give up. He would always put temptations, and actually, the entry of temptation is the way we think. Actually, um, this is the weapon where the devil used to battle our mind. Um, whether he is successful in the temptation depends on how much room we give him, right? Um, in, I remember a story in the Bible uh, about, there's uh, an example about those temptations. Uh, King David, the Bible said that King David was on the rooftop and he saw a beautiful lady, which Bathsheba. And he inquired with that lady and invited him to the palace. And you know, the, the next thing happened, he, David was lying already, he committed murder. And the Bible said that, uh, that really scars David for the, for the rest of his life. But we also know that David really cried out to God when prophet Nathan confronted him about this scene. And it just began with the thought. thought. If he had not entertained the thought, well, he was supposed to be in the in war, but no, he was just looking on the rooftop and he said, "This beautiful lady." So it it started with the thought, and he entertained the thought. So we know that David cried out to God, and really, uh, what I like about David was he did not hide his sin. I mean, when, when Nathan confronted him, he acknowledged his sin before God and asked for forgiveness. And we know 
God, the Bible said God, uh, David was a man after God's own heart. You know, it doesn't really matter if we we have messed up in past of our lives, but you know, God had forgiven us. Uh, there's always that accusing thought. You know, uh, the 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 devil will always try to accuse you of your past. But the Bible is very clear in Romans eight one that there is therefore there's no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So even though I'm not encouraging you to, to sin, you know, but you know, if we do, if we do, God, God can forgive us. God can, you know, work within the heart if we submit to Him, just like David. Okay. Another example I would like to point out is also in the way we think is in the biblical example was Joseph. Joseph was being, you know, seduced by the by the wife of Potiphar. No. But you know what Joseph did? He ran away. He hadn't done, this was his, he just ran away. He, he, did not, he, had, he did not have a second thought, just like David that did. Okay, so he ran away. So, you know, these temptations are, are, are the one being used by, by, by Satan. Remember, Satan is a liar. He wants to see, start to see his words as lies. Okay, it may be okay, it, it just look okay, but in the end it's lead to death. Okay, so temptation will be with us for as long as we are here on earth, and uh, nobody is exempted. Even Jesus was tempted. Uh, the Bible said that in Hebrews 4 15, um, Jesus was tempted, but uh, he was just tempted. just the way we are, but the Bible said that Jesus never sinned. He was without sin. He was tempted, but without sin. As, as we can see in Matthew 4, um, the devil tempted Jesus in the wilderness while he was full of the Holy Spirit. He was just fasted for 40 days, and there comes the temptation. And just, I just want to see how, how, how God, how Jesus reacted to this temptation. The first temptation actually was and the temptation and the appeal to, of the lust of the flesh. Uh, Jesus was very hungry, and, and, and Satan challenged him, you know, uh, why not make this uh, stone turn into bread? But Jesus said that it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out from the mouth of God. Okay, I just, I just want to, to say something on this because, um, okay, we, we may not eat for a week, okay? It's okay, uh, we, but we get thinner, right? What if you don't eat the word of God? The Bible is very clear. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out from the mouth of God. Spiritually, we become weak as well, right? If, if physically we become weak without eating, it's the same with the word of God. So it's very important. The word of God was the one used by Jesus to confront Satan. Uh, that's why it's very important for us to study the Word of God, to memorize verses, because in times of, you know, trials, God would, the Bible said um, in Psalms, I have hidden your word in my heart so that I shall not sin against you. When the bombardment of temptation comes, we, Lord, um, this is your word. I would have to hold on to your word. I cannot give in because your word is true. You said in your word that you will never leave me nor forsake me, right? So it's very important that on daily basis, as we eat physically, it's very important that spiritually we read our Bibles as well. We let our spirit eat something, okay? Uh, that, the first temptation is appeal to the last. And the second was appeal to the pride of life. The, one, the reason I'm saying is because this is the same um, issues that Satan will try to tempt us. He will tempt us on the appeal of the flesh. He will tempt us for the pride of life. And he will tempt us on, on the appeal on our eyes. Okay? So in all of this, Jesus' weapon against Satan was the word of God. He said, uh, in the second temptation, he said that, uh, it, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Because Satan was trying to... Uh, and the devil took him into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. But Jesus said, No. 
uh, for he was challenging the word of God, actually. Satan was try, try, trying to challenge the word of God. He, sh he said, he shall give his angels charge over you. But, but Jesus answered him back, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. So Jesus actually used the word of God. How important it is to really study and memorize the word of God. The Bible said that the word of God is like a two-edged sword. Okay? It will penetrate to our soul. Okay? So it's very important that um, um, we have to study because this is our weapon against, against the devil. Um, the, the Bible said in Ephesians that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. So our enemy is not the flesh, it's not man. It's the spirit working within that man. And you can only defeat him through the word of God. Okay? So he said, take, all, take, f take, um, take on the full armor of God. And the, word, the full armor of God is actually the word of God itself. So it's very important, right? Uh, okay, um, I like to, to um, there was a no, uh, I was studying this, this lesson and I came across Pastor Steve Nolan's note on the discipline of the mind. I said, Brother Andrews, could you, could you put it in? Um, he said, rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Okay, and and it says whatever, okay, whatever is true, whatever, finally brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. I think this is what God is telling us. This is the things we need to think. Everything which is noble, which is right, which is pure, that's the thing we need to think about okay um, could you could you there's another one okay oh okay uh, this is from from dad Nolan's notes he said that here is a simple action that will help you if a thought passes through your mind that is appealing or attracted to you trace it step to the end and if the end result would be bad it must be crucified right then at the beginning don't go back to it don't entertain don't feed let it die Remember this notes from I think we uh, when we attend the Tagaytay conference. This was on Daddy's notes, uh, Pastor Sib no Nolan, uh, the dad of Pastor Jennifer, <laughs> actually. Uh, so in James, um, in James uh, one twelve to fifteen, could you put in James one twelve to fifteen? Um, okay, in James one twelve to fifteen, God. James gave us a clear insight into how our mind operates and the progressive steps, step by step downward path that disobedience and sin lead to. It says, blessed is the man who persevere under trial. When he had stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that he had promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone, but each one is tempted when by, own, by his own evil desire he is dragged and, and, and enticed. Then after desire had conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin when it's full grown, gives birth to death. Okay, so, um, so we, if we understand the, these words, after desire had conceived, and when desire has conceived, it becomes part of you. Okay, then your system feeds it and it grows and grows until it's fully developed. Okay, so um, this is also from Dad's notes it says here that um, if we understand the word conceive, since we didn't get rid of the wrong thought earlier, it grow in us until it become part of us and fully develop. What shall we do now if we desire to get rid of this sin before it kills? At this point, the only option is abortion, a violent act of removal necessary because it has become part of us. If we don't act decisively and immediately, the next step is giving birth to sin. It has now progressed from a thought, a desire of a rebellion, act, and sin when it is full grown gives birth to death. So, okay, so uh, 
go back to how, how we can renew our minds. How are we to renew our minds? Um, we, I have said already on, on the past, on, on before that, um, our state of mind before we were in Christ and now, before we were in Christ and now that we are in, in Christ. So the primary exhortation is actually in, in uh, Romans 12. Can you put that Romans 12? So it actually start with um, offering ourselves to God in verse 1. Okay. This has to be a daily attitude of surrender. Our mind is certainly alive and active, taking in and processing our thoughts every day. That is why as for Christians, mind renewal is necessary. Every day, discipline of spiritual warfare. The good news is we can actually um, train our minds as we can train our, our bodies. A mind in tune with God is more able to stand against Satan's attack, okay? So what shall we do if we want to renew our minds? We have to do it daily uh, because Satan is, the Bible said, is like a roaring lion. He's always there uh, trying to get the opportunity to tempt us, okay? So there are some things, things we need to do to, to, to have a renewed mind. First um, is in John 4, verse 1. Okay. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets has gone into the world. Okay. Um, as I said, the, uh, Satan's uh, weapon is in our thinking. He can always put thoughts in our mind, but he cannot force us to think it over and over. Okay. So the Bible said that we should have to um, test our thought. Is that from God? Is that from our th thought comes from th um, comes from three different source. Our thought comes from God, our thought comes from the enemy, or our thought from ourselves. So if a thought comes into you, you should have to uh, try the spirit whether they are from God. Okay, it's not that we just have to to agree with what Satan puts in our mind, okay? His word gives us a standard, actually. Um, when we, how can we know that it's a, a thought from God or from Satan? And God's word is very clear. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness, which is also the word of God. So the word of God is the standard in which we can De, uh, determine what kind of thoughts we have. Okay. Refuse wrong thoughts. We should refuse wrong thoughts. Um, in James 1, 14, 15, as, uh, we are tempted when, by his own evil desire. So um, we should have to refuse wrong thoughts and replace it with a thought that comes from from God, if okay, and in another another way when we can renew our mind is to resist the devil. So in James four verse seven it says, "Humble yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he will flee from from you." So um, as I said earlier, uh, there are some thoughts that comes us, and the Bible said that Satan is our accuser. Okay, he will always accuse things of our past. And I said earlier in Romans 8 verse 1 that the Bible said that if there, uh, there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. God had purchased us with his blood. God has uh, saved us and he has forgiven us. So if any lies comes into your mind, you have to take hold of the word of God, of the promises of God. That is why it's very important to, to memorize, I said, God's word. Okay? So um, it's our weapon, actually, of offense. And another thing, we ca how we can bring your, your mind is in First John 2, 15, verse 7.
Stop loving this evil world and all that it offers you. For when you love the world, you show that you do not have the love of the Father in you. So that's another antidote for us, okay, to, to re how to renew our, our minds. We have to, uh, to stop loving this world and what this world can offer, actually. I remember, this is not our final home. The Bible said that we are uh, just alien in this world. We are just passing by. So we don't really need to uh, <laughs> love the things of this world. Okay. And finally, I would say that uh, in Philippians 4 verse 8, this is what God wants us to do with our minds, the way, how we think. As I can say, this, this should be our catalog, actually, and in Philippians 4, 8. Okay? Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report, if there be any virtue of this, there be me in a press. Think of these things. So the idea is we have to think only what is true. If it's not on the Bible, if it's, it's against the word of God, then replace the thought. We should not, uh, you know, try to play it over and over in our, in our minds, okay? Whatever are just, whatever are pure, whatever are lovely, okay? Uh, <coughs> Okay, um, I would like to, to end up this um, um, thought that that, tr that list is a lot, right? So if we can replace the thought with this thought, then we can have a renewed mind. Um, I just want to finish this with, uh, again, on the, on the book of Daniel, that um, Babylon did everything to indoctrinate the Daniel and his friends, right? Um, they were indoctrinated. For three years, they were trained. They, were, they have to go to school and learn a lot. And, and still, against all odds, they retained a good centered worldview, actually. The Bible said that even in their early stage, they were very young, actually. And actually, this reminds me of as parents, how we train up our children. Because they were very young. The, the pressure was there, the peer pressure was there. But we see how they become vic victorious. Still, they retain, retain the God-centered value. I think it has to do also with how their parents brought them up. As, as a parent, maybe this could be a challenge for us as well, how we trained up our children. It's not that. Um, uh, today, is, it's really very di difficult in this generation at all. Maybe I have to preach this to myself as well. We don't want really if we, to have a lot of time with our children. We just give them the, you know, the tablet, okay, play with this, or, or telephone, or instead of spending, spending time with them and training them. And I, I really, um, this is the same strategy that Satan used. Babylon was alluring, okay? This is, brothers and sisters, this is the strat strategy that Satan used during that generation. At it's the same time, this is, this, the, this is what we're facing right now. Uh, we are in generation of, uh, what could you say, uh, materialism. We want the, the latest gadget, or everything, right? We, we really have this in mind. And sometimes if we don't have enough money, now just you get envy with others of that and you're trying to you know the bible is very clear on that so we should be content in what we have right so um in closing um it's almost uh, it's almost okay <laughs> okay in closing uh i would like to uh let brother xp um let us pray for one another if we have this um unhealthy thoughts you know, this, if we have anger in our hearts, if we have bitterness, if we have unforgiveness, this, these are thoughts that are not pleasing to God. We need to, you know, renew our minds on these things. We have only to think about these things. 
times, okay? So, uh, let us pray for one another, actually. As Brother XP uh, lead us the song in, in the song, I Surrender All, let's um, pray for one another. If we have this, you know, this feeling of, you know, unforgiveness, anger, hatred, dominating our minds, God can renew us. Amen? Amen. Okay. That's it for today. Okay, let's pray for one another. And Brother XP. Okay, let's pray. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hey, we just want to pray for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Heavenly Father, Almighty God, Lord, uh, we just thank you for your word today, Lord. Um, Lord, you know this touches each and every one of us, Lord. Um, and there's purpose why you put this in your word, Lord, for us to know and understand, Lord, um, what you want from each of us, Lord. Uh, Lord, you ask us not to conform to the ways of this world, Lord, uh, but to be transformed, to be renewed. And Lord, I think we all need that today, Lord. Um, and we we just need to constantly look unto you, Lord. Uh, you show us these things, Lord, because you also have the answers and the solutions, Lord. Um, and you want us, Lord, to seek your ways, Lord. You want us to um, search and look unto Jesus, Lord, to give us um, the answers, Lord, and the direction we need, Lord. Oh, Lord, we um, thank you for the, the testimonies of, 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 the, of the Bible, Lord, of those people like Daniel, Lord, who were able to sustain uh, life in a world which was completely at odds with with. Um, what they knew fundamentally was the truth and was just and was righteous. And you sustained them, Lord. Um, they looked unto you, Lord, and they were able to withstand the, the, the world around them, Lord. Even unto the fire, Lord, even unto great temptation. And Lord, you blessed them and you lifted them up, Lord. Not only that, Lord, you walked among them, Lord, in the fire, Lord. You, you were there with them, Lord God. Oh, Father, we ask you to just be with us today. We ask you, Lord, to be with us in our daily life, Lord, in our daily walk. Uh, come and help us, Lord God. Come and help us to live the life, live the life that you call us to, Lord, um, that you tell us is, is the way you want us to be, Lord, to the way you want us to walk. Help us, oh, Lord, to just fix our hearts on those things that are honest, those things that are righteous, those things that are just, Lord, things that are pure, um, things that you know, Lord, um, bless us and lift us up and make us holy, Lord. Lord. And sometimes we feel far from that, but we ask you, O oh God, to just reach into our hearts and, and into our lives, Lord. Give us the strength um, and give us, Lord, the, the blessing, Lord, that comes with it as well, Lord. Um, that when we walk with you, Lord, uh, when we stand for you, when we uh, train our thoughts and our minds upon you, Lord, that we are not just renewed, but really blessed, Lord God. Uh, we're refreshed, Lord God. We're energized, Lord God. And we need that, Lord, to get through each day, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Your mercies are new every morning, O oh God. We thank you that we have this day to um, take time out from our busy lives and just turn to you, um, spend some time in, in prayer, in worshiping our God, um, and in receiving, Lord, the blessing from you that we need, Lord God. Uh, we just ask us to ask you to renew us, Lord, and to help us in this journey, O oh God. Uh, Father, we thank you for the word today. We thank you for the message, Lord. Um, we just thank you for what you're doing in our church, O oh Lord, uh, what you're doing in our hearts. 
And we just give you thanks, Lord, that we can rejoice uh, in your name, Lord Jesus. We can rejoice um, in your presence. We can rejoice in your grace and, and blessing, Lord. Father, we just thank you for um, this time. And uh, we ask you to bless this church, Lord God. Have your hand upon everyone here today, Lord, and those who are not here, Lord. Uh, just fill our hearts with your joy and with your love. Uh, we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Mm. Mm. Thank you. Amen.